What's up guys, it's Alec Mac 111 and we're back with another unboxing as you can tell by the thumbnail and the two different packages that I bought from subscribers. But first, before we get into that, you guys did awesome on the last two videos. Um, I think there were like six people that won patches. So the correct number for what I spent on that last unboxing was $2,400 exactly. So if you guessed $2,400, um, send me a screenshot of your comment. I already liked, I think I hearted some of the ones. I like all your guys' comments if I can, and then I heart the ones that won. So if you have guessed over the past two weeks, anything that says $2,400, as long as you only commented once, I will check, you get patches. And I think like six people won. So I will send you free of charge for those patches. We are doing the same thing for this collection. I bought two different collections, a dude from Columbus, and then another dude, I think he's from Kentucky or South Carolina. Um, and so I have bought his collection and that one. So the combined one for this, again, I'm doing the same thing. If you guess the correct number exactly, either in a five or a zero, I will give you those pa uh, patch for free. I'll ship it to you free of charge. I mailed it out. I think so far that means like 11 people have won patches so far in the past month. So if you want to join that crew, you can. Also, I am doing the first annual, maybe annually, I'm not sure, Alec Mac 111 Come Play Airsoft With Me. And this is June 28th. My friend Justin, my cameraman, one of my best friends, he is having his bachelor party. And so we are getting a bunch of dudes together. Splatter Park is officially open in Columbus. That's where I'm at right now for a weekend. I'll be back in like two weekends. So it's Splatter Park the 28th. They're open only on Sundays but we're doing a giant airsoft open play. And so I'm hoping there'll be a lot of people there and I'm hoping you guys will wanna show up. I will post a little bit more on my Instagram um, and stuff in the future, but if you are from Ohio or if you're really close and you wanna come play, Splatter Park's fun, it's really laid back games. I love it because it's just kinda go mess around with your friends. I wear like a hoodie or t-shirt or shorts and then run around with a bunch of high caps. It's a blast, but if you guys want to come, either message me or contact me or something. We're thinking about doing like a bunch of the groomsmen slash friends of groomsmen versus everybody so you might either get a chance to play with us or against us at least for some of the games but it's going to be a really really fun time so if you guys want to show up for that message me either on hop up or instagram i will post something as well in uh, on youtube when i get closer to that but let's get into the boxing. All right, so this is the first part of the unboxing. This guy sent me his entire collection. He basically messaged me like, hey, I've done work with your brother in the past. I really want to start over. So can I sell you my entire collection and then start over? And so that is what we have here. And then another kid was getting out of the sport. He was a senior in high school and I met him yesterday and I bought his other collection as well. So I'm gonna do his collection first and then I'm gonna do the other dude's collection. Alrighty, so bubble wrap first job. Um, up first we have, I believe this is an Airsoft GI FMG4. Uh, this is the plastic body version of him. I think this is what that logo is. And he's got a nice little short rail system on this. I think Jared has tuned both these guns, both the AEG and then the Polar Star that's in here. Um, it's got a Noveski up front, UTG rail covers. I actually really like this a lot. And then it's got some basic iron sights. And then this is an Aimpoint replica T1. But it does have the Aimpoint trades on it, which I think are really cool. And then just a basic stubby stock. It does look like this is going to be needed to um, be pushed in. And then finally, the Tango Down grip. But I actually really like this gun. I love how he set it up. All right, up next, we got a Bago upgrade. So it looks like this is for the HPA gun. He's got a speed trigger. Um, he's got some Angel Custom unopened stuff in here. This is an Ambi selector switch with the Michigan State or like Spark. It kind of literally looks exactly like the Michigan State logo. And then he's got some other stuff in here as well. It looks like a red and blue extra nozzle. I'm not sure what's in it. And then he's got an Angel Custom mag release. So it looks like he's got some custom parts that he just never ended up installing on his weapon. And up next is his main gun, and this is a VFC 416 CQB. Man, this is nice. Looks like he's got some of the fake Emba sights up front. If you have fake versus real Emba sights, it's really easy to tell because of the quality. I got some fake Emba sights for like $10 off eBay, and they are not honestly worth it. They just don't feel like the real ones. Up front is a KAC style birdcage flash, or this is, I think this is actually the BCM one? I'm not 100% sure. But I really like that flash hider. He's got the standard 416 rail on it. AFG, I actually really like how far up he put his AFG. That's actually kind of, I think it looks really sleek on that as well with being that close to the rail system. I like my grips kind of in the middle compared to most people because some people run them really far forward. Like my friend Rob's, Rob's super far forward. And then some people kind of do the whole Magwell grip. Um, but I believe this is a Polar Star Fusion engine. I think that's what he installed in it. Oh, and he actually put a Max Hop up in it as well. That's pretty sweet. So I've just got into the Max Hop-Ups. I know Umbrella Armory switched to them 
and a lot of people are saying they have, it's like Jared says there's sometimes issues with Pro Wins, but the max hop-ups are really expensive. I think Pro Wins is still probably the second best hop-up, and for the value is probably the best. I'm just not sure how the quality control went from when they went to Pro Wins slash DiTac. Um, but the Maxes are really, really cool. They look really, really cool. And so far, the one I have in my Polar Star, I actually just switched to one. I have not got to field it yet, but it feels really good. It shoots pretty consistent in my backyard. Um, we got a Magpul CTR stock on the back here. We got a uh, IGL as well. This is just a basic black. Tango Down style grip. Actually has some pretty cool texturing on it as well. And these 416s, man, they're just so nice. They literally just look so sleek. I love the CQB as well. And I really like the flash hider he put on. I think that really completes it a lot and then he's got his rail cover right there as well super super sleek gun alrighty those of you that are watching the last few videos you know what time it is just kidding I can't actually fit in this box mostly so I'm just gonna kind of dump it out right here please be good that was about as nicely as I could do it all right up next we have what I believe is another Haley's chest rig I actually got another one of these and this is a wolf gray version I think this is a legit Haley's. I've not actually seen the Wolf Gray. I've owned a few Coyote Browns, owned a few multi-cams, actually owned one of the rarer patterns as well. And he's running the GMP High RPS mid-caps. Man, these are literally the best magazines in the market. I actually adopted them when they literally had just come out because I was such a huge fan of GMP. Um, and I really, really like them. I th Honestly, they're always out of stock on e-bikes, so that means everybody likes them. And they just work so well. I've had my mag these mags for like seven years, and they still feed point three is pretty well as long as you don't leave your mags overflowed um but the, yeah this isn't this is a nice i think this is legit haley's yep you can see right here here's the haley's logo so this is a wolf gray or maybe like battle gray or something but i really like that color honestly fits really well for kind of like a go setup if you want to throw like your ar-15 magazines in here and then run it in the car um, i like what he did with the punisher patches and the american flag as well um, kind of cool like the blue line for law enforcement in there as well i think that's what that stands for um, but this is a nice color. It actually feels like it's in really, really good condition. And I may actually think about running this with my AR-15 and kind of running this chest rig setup because I ended up selling the last one I had because these did discontinue. I don't know why they discontinued them. I think they have a different model, but this is probably, in my opinion, the best chest rig that I've ever owned. Looks like he had about 10-ish of the tan magazines. These are awesome. I actually have only owned a few tan ones. And then he's also got some mag pouches as well. So these are the mag pouches, just a basic, probably a Condor. Yeah, it feels like Condor. Uh, multi-cam pouch and then I think these are the little bit different style of the magazines I think these came out newer this is like the or maybe this came with one of the guns it's like the skull frog high rps mid cap I'll do a close-up so you can kind of see the difference between those magazines it's it feels it's just cool it's like a little textured I don't know if those are the newer versions or maybe it just came with one gun in particular yeah it looks like he also has about 10 of these black ones they, they come in packs of five I believe and they could have got some individually and then he has their high caps as well which I love these these and the PTS EPM high caps are literally all I've been running at Splatter Park. All right, we got some more accessories up next. Looks like this is a unused AR-15 grip. So this is the Magpul MOE grip. Oh, this is the plus version. I actually had one of these on my AR-15. So I had the gray one on my AR-15. I actually just put it on Rob's AR-15. He's not allowed to know that yet. I'm tricking out his AR-15 for him. But yeah, I guess you've got to get that in, Rob. Um, these are awesome. They have like a really cool rubberized texture to them, which I think are sweet. Um, I really like the look of them. And then I put one of the tough one grips over it. Oh, yo, your boy nice with it. Not gonna lie. The mosquito already got me in the leg. And so I'm having to defend myself out in the backyard because I don't have a ton of mosquitoes where I'm at in my apartment in Indiana, at least coming at me right then. And then we have another magazine, a dump pouch externally. I have something really cool at the end of this, but I want to go through the rest. This is a Magpul ASAP plate, I believe. This is, it looks like actually it might be a real one. Um, it's got the real trademarks on it. And then another Noveski KX3 amplifier. And the last thing in this unboxing, we have two things. I'm sorry, I lied. This is, looks like it's some sort of IFAC pouch. He's just got a bandana and then a high cap magazine in there as well. But this one feels nicer. I think it's still Condor, but it feels like a little bit thicker. Maybe it's just because, yeah, it's a Condor, but it feels low quality. And then we have this baby, which is so, so, so cool. Um, this is an AHAO Howe Industries rail system. And so I think these are like, they started out as like a PTW rail company. And so this is for the 416 Geisley Super Module Rail. There's no way this is a real one. The real ones of these are like $400. I have a real one of these on my AR-15 and it's nice. It's not this exact version. It's a little bit different version. I'll throw a picture right here. 
but this actually, this looks like it might be a real one. I think this actually might be a real Geisley rail. So this is the Geisley SMR. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get this and install it on his HK416. And maybe it doesn't fit. I'm not sure if the VFC lines up with the real ones. Um, but this looks really, really cool. HK416. But I think this is, I think it's how is what he said. Like how Industries. I was looking into their stuff. They make really cool stuff. I know specifically a lot of people like the HAO, the how, um, PTW kits are like really, really desirable, but they're also like stupid expensive. But that concludes the first unboxing. Thanks dude for selling me this. I'm really appreciative of it. And now it's time for the second part. All right, up next, this actually did not come in a box, obviously, because I met the kid yesterday at Easton in Columbus, for those of you that know. And he was getting out of the sport, and so he said, I'm done. He's a senior in high school. None of his friends played anymore, which was sad. But I got to buy all of his stuff. So right here, this is probably the oldest KWA I have ever seen in my entire life. This boy has KWA right there, but it literally has nothing else. I think he spray painted it, but this is literally like the oldest SR10 I've ever felt. Back in the day, I've actually told this story once or twice. Back in the day, the KWAs, when they came out originally, it was like Tokyo Murray and then Classic Army. And then like KWAs came out and anyone who had a KWA with an 11.1 LiPo at the Backyard Airsoft Games was considered like a Greek God. And they were like insane. It's like, bro, you can shoot 25 rounds a second full auto. Super funny now how upgraded we have compared to this, but yeah. So KDB SR10, I really like these guns. I think they are awesome. Um, they're metal, really high quality construction. They do do the kind of two piece or one piece, yeah, two piece hop of system with the two V prongs, which if this thing's old might need replaced. KAC style grip, obviously not real. Um, and then we have a Gemtech suppressor up front as well, which is pretty nice. So this is just a black Gemtech black side. These are really nice, really cheap suppressors if you kind of want to start. And they're really light too, which is nice. And then he's got some paracord back here as well, tango down grip. And I think everything internally is probably stock, but it looks super old. This looks like his workhorse. This looks like the one he played with the most. And then I think this is an aim point comp one up top. Not sure if it actually works. All right, gum number two actually brings back memories because he said he got this at Airsoft Smith, which is a field or a store in Columbus that used to be open. And I saw this tag right away and I was like, yo, it looks like he got that at Airsoft Smith. So this is an HK uh, G36C. It does have the flash hider kind of destroyed. So I'm not exactly sure what brand this one is. It does have like a red inner barrel, if that tells you anything. I don't know if it's like a JG. Actually, JG used to make a really, really high quality G36. Um, but there's so many, this could be like the Elite Force competition version. There's so many different uh, variables. Whoa, is that a functioning bolt catch? No, it's probably just stuck. Yeah, so um, it just says Heckler and Coke. This is probably like the sport line of the Elite Force ones, if I had to guess. It feels not too bad, but definitely feels like a cheaper gun. And this is probably one of the backup guns that he ended up running. This comes with a standard high cap um, that you run. I actually really like these G36 mags. It's kind of frustrating because you can't run in the M4 pouches with all the side hinges and they're a little bit too thick but they are really nice i guess if you got some m4 pouches that are a little bit bigger you can but i really like the g36 platform and jared is actually working on a polar star version of the g36 which i think is cool all right up next we have a uh, leaf force m16 magazine so these are just the basic black m4 mags yeah i have a lot of these i probably have them um, honestly i need to make a sale video for you guys because i honestly have like 150 magazines that i'm sitting on and just a bunch of guns and so I think maybe I'll do that next through the video afterwards. All right, up next we have his <laughs> plate carrier and he's got the sickest little taco pouch I have ever seen in my life. Look at that little thing. This is like a taco pouch patch or something because it's got magazines and it's got bullets in it and it's got a grenade, which I think is super cool. Obviously I'll show you a close up on that because you can't miss it. Um, then he's got some Condor mag pouches, I believe. These ones are Condor, yeah, didn't have them weaved. Um, for those of you that don't know how to weave Molly, I would really look into it, because your magazines are gonna be a lot more secure if you actually weave it right, instead of just kind of putting them through. Um, you're not gonna flop around like this when you use them. I think this is just like a Lancer tactile plate carrier. Yeah, so it's a Lancer tactile plate carrier. Nice little starter rig, honestly. Um, it's got a admin pouch up here, I think. They probably just include all these pouches. I believe this is probably the only one that's not included in the package. They probably just do like a flat package, like a kind of like an IFAC radio pouch and then some magazine pouches. And then this looks like it's a little bit different color, but I would assume all this is included. I'm not 100% sure how Lancer Tactical does stuff, or maybe he bought all this separately, but it's a nice little starter plate carrier. All right, KWA number two, and this one is an SR7. Definitely looks like this boy has gotten a little bit less playing time. Does not look quite as loved. Still looks like it's been loved and spray painted, um, but this definitely feels like it's in better condition. This actually might be a, a step up from the first KWA, the SR10. I think this is like, the normal ones that might have been like a gen one and i think kdba did some upgrades 
a, a little bit like to make some of their stuff a little bit better after they release the Gen 1s with the old Kitty Bay logos because they have the um, logoing a little bit differently on these. Their like text font is a little bit different, but it feels good. Looks like it's got the standard hop up in there as well. Um, so please do not remove seal or warranty void if you remove it. Um, this is a nice gun. I actually like the spray paint job he's done on it as well. It's really simple, really basic, but KDBAs, man, they're just solid, consistent workhorse guns, to be honest. Up next, we got some accessories. So this is an ICS drum magazine. I've actually heard really good things about these, but never had one. And then an Evite Chrono. I've actually sold all my chronographs. And uh, one of my friends is like, hey, can you chrono my gun so I can see how much it is that I bought from you? And I'm always like, no, I don't have a chrono, but now I do have one. So this one actually looks like it's new in box. I'm not sure 100% if he used it, but chronos are a nice little thing to have. Problem is, as soon as I get them, I love the Ace Cortec ones. They're awesome. Or Ace Tech, Ace Tech chronograph. Ace Cortec. I just mixed X Cortec and Ace Tech, which is funny because Ace Tech is from X Cortec, but we won't talk about it. Um, yeah. Nice little chronograph. All right, now we got the bag o gear. So this is just a bunch of random pouches. So I'm gonna kind of go rapid fire that he said. So just a basic M4 pouch. Uh, looks like we got a second one. This one actually is Molly, and this boy is like World War II Vietnam. I think this is like the Malice system or like a regular belt system. No idea what brand either of those are. Up next, we got some Mole magazines. Wow, so this dude had an entire Ziploc bag. I'm guessing these are just a mix of like mids and highs. Up next, we have a basic belt system and then some of his camos. Looks like these are what he ran. This is like the Choco Chip pattern. So it looks like he was running tan-based BDUs and these are pretty cool. And here is the shirt. So this is kind of like Desert Storm camo pattern. I actually really like this. Um, I know the GMR mini maps in this pattern are pretty desirable. And he's got the bucket hat. That's dope. Yeah, so this is the bucket hat. Um, same thing, mesh lower. So this looks like this was his entire loadout uh, that he kind of put in here. We got some random other pouches as well. But this backpack, he said, was actually new. I think it still has the tags on it as well. Um, yeah, he still left the tags on it. This is like a Fieldline Pro Series, which is funny because when I started Airsoft, I actually used a Fieldline backpack as like my first little carry. I had to carry my bags and BBs back there, and I'd be like, shh, 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 and you just hear me like running around with two high caps, and I, it was definitely half the size of this bag, but it was a really fun time just kind of reminiscing. When I see your guys' collections, I reminisce. I'm like, man, I remember when I was at that spot, Airsoft wise. Oh, I remember when I ran something like that. And it's kind of cool to relive those years in a sense. And the second bag, oh goodies, we have a smart charger in here. We got some uh, mags, another magazine maybe. We have a red dot. So this is like a red dot. Um, we have up here a nice little grip. So I think this is one of those spring assisted grips. And then he's just got his batteries, a little bit of lube and stuff in there. So it looks like he's got a little suppressor as well, some flash hiders. I don't want to take this all out because I don't want to spill it everywhere and I'm outside. But I do have one more gun left. And last but not least, good old tried and true. He said he used his gun so much that he shot the flash hider off or it broke when he fell or something because you can still see a BB right there. And so the flash hider is gone and half the threads are gone. But these are great little guns, man. You can, I mean, for the price, they are definitely get beat up pretty quickly and people destroy them pretty quickly. And you see these as almost every single rental gun on fields. But these guns, man, you can't deny them. They work, they're light, they're good. Um, they definitely are cheaper build quality than a lot of things, but they're also cheaper than most guns out there on the market. And they perform pretty well. They have probably the best stock bucking on the market with the G&G &G greens. It just works in pretty much every weather and environment. Um, but yeah, that's been the unboxing. If you guys guessed right, good luck on that. Um, I will not give you any hints. Actually, I will. Okay, so if you stayed to the end of the video, you deserve a hint. It was between the $2,400 that I did in the last video and I think it was like the 1100 I did three videos ago. So it's somewhere in between that price-wise. That is your range. If you guess over that or under that, I'll laugh at you and say, ha ha, you did not watch to the end of the video. But for those of you that did, enjoy it. There's another mosquito, bro. Yo, KDR up 2.0. Actually, I'm at 2.1 since I got fricked. Wow. Man.